Hello everybody, it's Adam here, coming back to you from Houdini uh, Prentice version 13. And today uh, I'm going to look into how to use object sequences inside of Houdini. So let's uh, go ahead and pull one in, uh, move into this plane, type Geo, choose the geometry node, and we'll dive inside. And instead of using this default geo that comes up, we're going to browse out to an object sequence. Now I have this horse sequence which you can download for free. Um, it's on sharecg.com. You can just search for horse and you'll find a 24 frame gallop sequence. The sequence ranges from 0 to 23. So let's go ahead and bring that in. And I'm going to do space G, get a little closer. Uh, middle, uh, what is it? There it is. Left click around here to look at the horse. And it looks kind of triangulated and yucky. So let's go ahead and uh, pop out the shop here. I'm going to drop a clay material on this thing. And I guess we'll just, uh, I'm not going to use that. I don't know why they changed that. It used to be you could just drop that on there and it worked, and now it just asks you questions. So we don't like questions. We're just going to browse out to the color map that came with this horse texture. Accept that. And we'll just rename this to horse. Go back to object. And at our material tab, we will choose the only one horse. Accept. OK, so now we've got a. Uh, better looking object at least. Um, looks kind of like a horse. He's painted okay. And uh, let's go ahead and move through our frames here. And you can see he does indeed gallop. But quite frankly this is a very sluggish system here. And you can see if I put this in real time and even if I were to drop this down to 24 you can see I don't. I'm getting three frames a second out of this which is kind of hard to think, well, I can't even play back one. And notice also what's happening. I'm getting this blink at the end. Uh, and the blink at the end is because the range is from 0 to 23 is what this OB sequence is. But the actual frame playback range is 1 to 24. So when we get to 24, we really aren't there. And we are actually losing frame 0. So we can fix that with a little expression here inside the file node. Go up here where this dollar sign $F is located, and we're just going to type a small replacement expression in here. It's a pad 0, so you put the back ticks in here, which means evaluate everything in between as an expression, and this is a function. And then, uh, and now when we look at it, we're just subtracting one from uh, the the main frame number. So in, so instead of at, at frame one, instead of loading one, we're loading zero. And at frame 24, instead of loading 24, we're loading 23. That at least fixes our uh, blinking or our lost frame. And uh, you may not notice that immediately, so it's worth checking at your Look at the numbering system and, and make sure you're not losing one either at the beginning or the end of your sequence. So how can we improve this performance here? Fortunately, Houdini does have a better file system than OBJ. Now, a lot of programs export OBJs, like you might be coming from, say, uh, Poser or Blender or even Max or Maya will give you an OBJ sequence. So what we want to do is make it uh, optimized. So we're going to right click on this and type file cache. And, whoops, too far. All right, so with the file cache selected, we're going to set our frame range. Now that we've corrected it, we can use 1 to 24. And we're going to go ahead and browse out here. I'm just going to put it in the same exact folder where the obj is, and I'm just going to call this horse obj dollar sign f dot, and let's look at our file extensions. 
we're going to use um, this BGOGZ. And this BGO is the native format for um, Houdini, and the GZ is a zipped version of that. So uh, let's see, BGO.GZ. This will make it as small as possible on the disk. And uh, with that set up, let's go ahead and uh, we just hit render control here. We'll select specify. We've already got 24 set up. We're going to render this out and down below we can watch the progress. We're 18, 21, 24, we're done. Okay, so with that done, let's go ahead and just create a new file node here. So we'll say file and this time we're going to browse out and notice this, it comes up immediately uh, with the BGOGZ and we can see it's 1 to 24. And so we'll accept that, move our view flag to here, and we didn't see anything change here in the viewport because the material is being applied one level up. So let's see what we get now. Look at that. We actually are getting almost 24 frames a second, which I think is what we specified in here. 24. So that itself is a big improvement. At least you can watch your animated sequences in near real time compared to what we're seeing here at this level. There's the OBJ, here's the BGO. So it's worth doing the convert, and that's only a one-time process. Um, so what else can we do now that we have this sequence up and running? Well, one thing we can do is we can extend it, and we can do that with the time node. So we will use time, oh, which one is it? I think it's time warp. And when we look at time warp, sorry about that, we can see it has an extend. Uh, so we, we set up our range, which we know is 1 to 24, and we'll just output 1 to 24 as well. And at the end, we'll just cycle. So that means that if I set this to back to 240 and hit play, we can now see that Whoops, that didn't work, did it? Oh, we have to view it. Here we go. We can now see that our gallop continues on infinitely now, which is, which is nice. So now we are not limited to the 24 frames. We can make our animation as long as we want, and our horse will just run along just fine. Um, what else can we do to this thing? Well, we might have noticed here we have an output range. So what we can do is actually just add another time warp here. I'm going to move it down a little bit. Oops, what I dove inside there. Let's just, uh, my mouse is really twitchy. Uh, we'll look at this time warp and notice that it, it stopped when I viewed it because its extend is no longer, uh, it's at a hold instead. And it's holding after this hundred. So we c what we can do is we can s go back to our 1 to 24 here. And maybe we want this to go 1 to 48 cycle. So now we've time stretched our OBJ sequence to a new time. And let's take a look. Maybe what we could do is 240, we'll just say 120. So that's going to go really slow now. And we're going to take a look at some frames up close here. So we're going to zoom in a little bit. And at frame one, we get this frame. Frame two, the same, three, four, and then it dr jumps. So every, we're going to have three frames that are exactly the same. Then we're going to get three frames exactly the same and so on. So that's kind of going to be a, a jumpy looking animation if we implement it that way. But fortunately there is an extra node we can add in here which um, will help smooth that out and interpolate between those three frames. Um, so we're going to go ahead and drop in a time blend in between. And this only really works if the frames that you're traveling between 
have the same number of vertices. So if this happened to be, say, a fluid sim or some kind of animation that grew and added faces and vertices over time, this time blend technique would not work. But for characters which generally have the same number of vertices every frame, the time blend can work for us. So let's take a look. I don't think we have to set anything up. Let's go back to frame one. And now you can see, when, even though I'm time stretching it, it's interpolating between the next frame that's real and we get a much smoother animation in slow motion, which is kind of cool. We can go ahead and disable it here. So there it is, kind of choppy, jumpy, and then there it is, smoother. And I think with that, let's go ahead and drop this back to 36, say. And what we could do also is up here at this higher level, we'll just copy and paste that. So this one here will be what? Horse one. This here will be horse two. And I think we could transform this guy to say what? 0 0.75. So now we got two horses that are running the same. And you can notice our frame rate has definitely dropped there. But we could go into horse two and set it to back to its real time here of 24. And now we've got one horse, two different horses running from the same sequence, but they're galloping at different times. And that's pretty much it. I just wanted to play around with ob sequence um, and demonstrate some of the capabilities and the optimizations that we have available to us in Houdini. With that, I'm out.